Listen to Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, adventure, intrigue, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Cradle of Western civilization. Mother city of world-famous men. Modern and ancient symbol of the glory that is Greece. This is the city of Athens. Uh, You're sure everything's all set, Grisha? There's no chance for a slip-out, eh? Believe me, my darling cousin Pagan, you got absolutely nothing to worry about. I swear it by the father of my father of my father. Huh? I knew it. I knew it. You're lying to me. Give me back my money and, and let me out of this thing. Pagan, you wound me deeply. I have allowed you to buy a half interest in a genuine Byzantine Bible. Oh, sure, for 50 bucks. When I could pick up all the Bibles I wanted for nothing. In any hotel room. Of course, my darling cousin. But would they be worth $50,000? Hmm? And all you've got to do is take it in that bookstore and give it to a man by the name of Santos. He'll give you the Mazuma and we'll split it right down the middle. 60-40. Well, uh... Well, okay, I'll take it, but uh, but believe me, Grisha, if I find out that you double-crossed me in any way... Hey, I, God, how can you say such a thing? After all, we are both Zellschmitz. That's just what I mean. Oh, well. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> oh, uh, how do you do, I'm sure. I- I'm looking for a uh, Mr. Santos. Would you be, by any chance, be him at, um, <clears throat> like, <laughs> like I was saying, I, I got here a, be- a beautiful deluxe edition of a Bible that's worth maybe $50,000. Hey, um, <clears throat> why, why, why do you sit there looking, looking at me like that, huh? Why do you, oh, oh, you, you're dead, you're, you're dead, you, let me out of here, let me, help, this is right. That's all I know, Mr. X. I walk in, this center's joker is dead. And I'm left holding the bag. What happened to Grisha? Well, that double-crossing no good was gone. I haven't seen hide of him since. Mm. So, what do you think, Mr. X? Is that Bible worth 50 grand, like Grisha said? No. I knew it. I knew it. No, I'd say it was worth about 10 million. Oh, sure, that's what I thought. It's only worth a lousy 10 million. 10 million! <laughs> Chief, does the name Aridas Tomaros mean anything to you? Tomaros? Well, sure. He was a wealthy Greek philanthropist some uh, 10, 15 years ago. That's right. He was going to establish a foundation for underprivileged Greek children when the Axis moved in and took over Greece. Tomaros escaped to Turkey and died there, penniless. And the foundation was never established. Yeah. But what's it got to do with that Bible you have, Ken? The, inspi- the inscription on the flyleaf says it belongs to the Tomaros family. Sorry. What? So what? Chief, the $10 million Tomorrow's put up for that youth foundation was never located. Just disappeared. And now there's been an offer of $50,000 on one murder over a Bible that should only be worth a few dollars. Ah. It'd be pretty nice, Chief, if that youth foundation could be started again. $10 million could do a lot of good for a lot of Greek children. Yeah. Now let me know how you come out, Ken. afternoon, sir. Is there something I could do for you? Yes, I'm uh, looking for a buyer for a book. I thought someone here might be interested. Oh, I'm sorry. We are going out of business and are not interested in buying any additional stock. 
Not even a Byzantine Bible? You have such a Bible? Well, if I did, would it be worth anything? Far more money than a bookshop like this could ever possibly afford. Strange. I understood a man by the name of Santos was willing to pay $50,000 for such a Bible if it was delivered to him here. Well? You are mistaken, sir. No one by the name of Santos is known here. Then what was the name of the man who was murdered here about an hour ago? No one has been killed on these premises. A call to the police should convince you of that. Oh, I've already called them. They've had no report of any murder here. But you are not convinced? No. Why not? You didn't pull that rug over far enough. What? That red stain on the floor is still showing. Anything more you'd like to tell me before I go? Nothing. Okay. You can find me at the Janitza Hotel if you change your mind. I can give you assurance right now that you have seen the last of me, Mr. Thurston. I might almost believe that, except for one thing. And what is that? How you knew my name when I hadn't mentioned it. Oh. Bye. Believe me, Mr. X, I've talked to practically every crook in... <laughs> I, I mean, uh, every friend I got in Athens. Nobody knows nothing about any 10 million bucks from any Tamaris Foundation for kids. Hmm. What about that dead man, uh, Santos? Nothing. Nothing. Nobody ever heard of such a character in the book business. I was afraid of that. I tell you, we're wasting time with fake Bibles and stuff, Mr. X. And we should ought to concentrate on a good legitimate business, like, like stolen diamonds. Diamonds? That's right. He's making a fortune in it. Who is? Mr. Santos. What? Oh, sure, he's the biggest fence in Athens. Handles more hot rocks than the firemen in the clinker factory. Hang on, if you don't start making sense... But I'm uh... making sense, Mr. X, I am, really. The only guy named Santos in this town is a crook. And besides, he's alive. Where does he hang out? Oh, he's got a little joint over Messina Street. Uh, but he isn't... Uh... Thanks, see you later, Pagan. So you wish to sell me a Byzantine Bible, Mr. Thurston? I understand you're in the market for one, Santos. Eh, it would be more exact to say that I was in the market for one. What made you change your mind? I'm very fond of money, Mr. Thurston, and $10 million American is a good deal of money. However, there is one thing I value more, my life. That $10 million you mentioned, that's the money that was going to support the Tomaros Foundation? It is. Then it's still in existence. And the Byzantine Bible I have holds the clue as to where it is. Your reasoning is most exact, sir. Yes. You know, Santos, you're being very cooperative. Yes, I quite agree. Why? Why risk my life being hoggish, Mr. Thurston? Even half of $10 million is a considerable sum of money. That's the cut you want for disclosing the secret of this Bible I have? It is, sir. Uh, giving you five million would rob a lot of Greek children out of a new way of life, Santos. Mm, perhaps. But it will also bring a new way of life to me, Mr. Thurston. Yes. Well? No deal. Hmm? As you wish. I'm certain I can find someone else who will enter into such an agreement with me. Uh, that'll be pretty tough. One of you would have to get the Bible away from me first. Yes. That is quite correct, Mr. Thurston. One of us would. So you finally found your cousin Grisha. That's right, Mr. X. He's waiting for us up here in the hotel room. Did he tell you where he got the Bible? He wouldn't tell me nothing. But now we'll learn that what it is all about when we can... Ooh! That is far enough, gentlemen. She's got a gun. She's got a gun. Well... You are not surprised to find me here, Mr. Thurston? Why should I be? I told you we'd meet again. Grisha, what happened to Grisha? That rather obnoxious little man I found here when I came in, he's gone. I was afraid he would interfere with my search. For my Byzantine Bible? No, Mr. Thurston. For my father, Aridus Tomaros, and the ten million dollars that he stole from me. We'll return to the man called X in just a moment. This is Herbert Marshall. All of us on the man called X wish to send our sincerest congratulations to radio station WFBC, Greenville, South Carolina. 
This great southern station today celebrates its 19th anniversary on the air. Best wishes to station WFBC and Mr. B.T. Whitmire, general manager of the station. And now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zell Schmidt. A fake copy of an ancient Byzantine Bible apparently holds the clue to $10 million, donated by the wealthy philanthropist Aridas Tomaras to establish a youth foundation for Greek orphans. And Ken Thurston is in Athens attempting to locate the missing funds in order to reestablish the foundation. And now, in his hotel room, he and Pagan are faced by a strange young girl who holds them at gunpoint. No, Mr. Thurston. I am not after your Bible. I am looking for my father, Aridas Tomaros, and the ten million dollars that he stole from me. So you're Aridas' daughter? Yes, Zurta Tomaros. As though you did not know. As a matter of fact, I didn't. And I didn't know your father was still alive. All that he's stolen ten million dollars from. Let's have that gun. Oh, you. Thanks. Stop that. What? Thank you, Mr. Thurston. Now, I suppose you'll tell us what this is all about, Mr. Maros. And what do you mean by looking for your father when he died penniless in Turkey a number of years ago? That is not true. He left my mother and me here to starve under the occupation while he lived on the fat of the land in Turkey with the ten million dollars he had stolen from us, from the foundation. Who told you all this? Santos? Yes. He had been associated with my father before the war. And the man who called this morning verified it. What man? Well, he didn't give his name. He only said that my father was here in town and that he had our family Bible with him and that I could have it to remember him by if I was willing to pay 50,000 American dollars for it. Yeah. Where did I come in? How did you know about me? Well, when I refused his offer, that man told me I could reach him at this hotel in your room in the event I changed my mind. Hmm. Ah, what a pack of lies, eh, Mr. Thurston? Let's take her down to the poke and lock her up for assault with a battery. No, 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 pig. I have a hunch that a story is true. But how can it be? You know this Aridas Tamaris is dead. Yeah, but somebody could be playing a pretty cruel trick on her in order to cash in on that Bible. Let's take a good look at it and find out for ourselves. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Thurston. Is there something we can do for you? Yeah, I'd like to have that Bible I left here in the hotel safe. Oh, of course, the Bible. I'll get it for you. Did you say the Bible, Mr. Thurston? Yeah, that's right. But I've already returned it to you. Returned it? But of course, not half an hour ago. You didn't give it to me. Not personally, no, but your friend brought your note. Um, here it is with your signature on it. You, you can see for yourself that it is your signature. <laughs> that's a perfect forgery, all right. Forgery? You, you you can't be serious. Did this friend of mine give you his name? Oh, yes, yes, I believe he did. I I, I can't remember exactly, but... Uh, yes, 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 now I remember. What, what, what was it? Uh, Tomorrow's. Your friend's name was Aridis Tomorrow's. where you found him? That's right. Hmm? Boy, what a bunch of throat cutters hanging around, eh, Mr. X? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, my dear hmm? friend, Mr. Thurston. Hmm? Isn't it rather unusual to find a gentleman like you in such a squalid atmosphere? You seem to be at home in it, Santos. <laughs> of course. In my business, one must frequent the haunts of one's customers. Smugglers, jewel thieves, others of that ilk. Yes. What about people who have stolen Bibles to sell? Yes, you are quite right. Where is he, Santos? Who, Mr. Thurston? Grisha Zellschmidt. Surely you do not suspect Grisha of having stolen your Bible. Only two people could forge my signature that well. And Pagan was with me. In the face of such insuperable logic, any denial would be useless. When last I saw him, he was in that back room. However, Mr. Je Zellschmidt no longer possesses the Bible. Oh? Who did he sell it to? Uh, poor Grisha could not inform me. 
he appeared to be rather dead. Come on, Grisha, you're all right. Now no. start talking about that Bible. And I want the whole story. Oh, sir, help me. I'll... Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you everything I know. Everything. Where did you get it in the first place? Well, it, it was kind of given to me by some Turkish sailor. What? I swear it by the father ah. of my... But it was. He owed me a couple bucks or two from a crap... <laughs> from a business deal, you understand, and gave me the Bible in part payment. He'd picked it up in Turkey someplace and said it was worth a lot of money to somebody in Athens. Here. Look. Here's the paper that came with it. The paper? Let me see that. What is it, Mr. X? Listen. In the event of my death, anyone returning this Bible to the below-mentioned people in Athens will be most suitably rewarded. And it's signed, Aridas Tumaros. Mr. Thurston. Yes. And the people he named are Zerto Tomaros, Andrea Santos, and the Georgi Pandelli. Pandelli? Who is he? Oh, he's captain of some steamship or something, a very low-class type of cheap skater. So you came to Athens and got in touch with these people? That's right. Pandelli and the Zerto cookie wouldn't have nothing to do with me. But Santos was different. First crock out of the bag, he offered me $50,000 for that fake old Bible. Well, what happened then? Well, after Pandelli knocked off Santos' pal in the bookstore, he called me and said he was ready to do business. But you already had the Bible in the safe, so I, I took it and brought it here to Pandelli. Only that dirty crook knocked me subconscious and didn't pay me nothing, and that's all I know. Boy, not even in my best lying days did I ever come up with such a malapazooza like that. Well, it could make sense, Pega. It could? Sure. And we're going to pay a visit to Pandelli's ship to prove it. on board of a tramped up steamer in the middle of the night like this? Uh... We didn't sneak aboard. We're paying an open visit to Captain Pandelli. Yeah, but... Come on. How do you know he wants to see us? Uh, maybe he don't like people asking questions about Bibles and stuff. Maybe... <laughs> oh. Oh, Mr. X. Yes. Pandelli. Can you hear me? Pandelli. Uh, Janice... Six, ten. What? Huh? Genesis six through ten. The money. G Genesis six. Si Mr. Thurston. Yes. So we got here too late. He's dead. Bible's gone. Now we'll never get the dough for Mr. Tamara's Youth Foundation. Why well, give up so easily, Pagan? We've only worked on this about 40 hours. It took Noah 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, that's right, that's right. It, it only took Noah 40 days and... Mm -hmm. No, your memory didn't play any tricks, Ken. Tamaris did make his fortune as a manufacturer of children's toys. And he specialized in putting out a Noah's Ark. With Thanks, Chief. That's all I wanted to know. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's all that got to do with finding the $10 million, getting his youth foundation operating again? The answer is in your Bible, Chief. Genesis. Chapters 6 through 10. Walking around this old broken down factory for anyways. It's where I read us Tumaras used to manufacture his toys. So, so what? The, the place was all bummed out in the war. There's nothing left but old smokestacks sticking up through a, a lot of rubble. Yeah. 
towering over the rubble like a mountain, like the peak of Mount Ararat rising above the waters after the flood. Hmm? Let's see what's inside the boiler room at the end of that stack. Mr. Rex, it's so dark in here. And dark. Uh, What are we looking for anyway? (laughs) Mr. Rex, what? What was that? Loose brick. Fell from somewhere inside that chimney. But how could it do that? Somebody's climbing up there. Climbing? Yep. Have you found it yet, Santos? So, it is the research for Mr. Thurston again. That's right. So you finally figured out where tomorrow's hid the funds of the foundation. It was not too difficult once I found Pantaleon. Yes. The clues were in Genesis, chapters 6 through 10. The story of Noah and the Ark and Mount Ararat. That is right. But how did you figure it out? I noticed some words in Ionic instead of the old Attic dialect. And if Tomaros had the money with him in Turkey, he wouldn't have needed the Bible and its code. That meant he hadn't taken it out of this country. Then I suppose you know how I came into the picture. And Pandelli. I'd guess Tomaros put those funds into something with permanent value, like uh, diamonds. You could have been his broker. I was. As for Pandelli, well, Tomaros got out of Greece some way. Pandelli's ship could have been the answer. It was. And now? It looks like his youth foundation is going to become a reality, Santos. You will have to get the diamonds first. I'm coming down first. Don't stand in my way. Take it easy, Santos. That stack is old. Ready to collapse. The concussion from those shots could start it. This way, pay on quick. Stay out of my way, you hear? Stay out of my way, you hear? The stack it is starting to crumble. It is... with him. Are they? Well, sure, they... they... <gasps> Mr. X, look. Sticking out of all those bricks and stuff. Yeah. A man's hand. Holding on to a steel string box. Looks like there'll still be a new world for thousands of Greek children rising out of the ruins of the old... <laughs> And now, here's our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Lucille Meredith, Will Wright, Polly Bear, Harry Bartell, and Stan Waxman. Next week, a story I promise will startle you with the, well, with the characters involved. One in particular. And that's in addition, of course, to Leon Belasco, who'll be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. This story is written by Sidney Marshall. The program is directed by Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. And now, until next week, same time and station, this is Hal Gibney saying good night for The Man Called X. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.